He's a Hall of Famer and a former Player of the Year, but Wes Malott has never won the PBA signature event, the Tournament of Champions. Last night, he began the long road to this year's title, but plenty of potholes await as he looks to drive past some of the PBA's best. Can the big nasty survive this TOC trek? have made their way to Northeast Ohio's Fairlawn as we welcome you inside historic Riviera Lanes, a bowling center bathed in history. What magical moment will it create next as we continue our Tournament of Champions coverage? Tonight's survival will join these four in tomorrow's final live on Fox. Later tonight, Jason Belmonte, Kyle Troop, and others take to the lanes, but we begin with this collection of five that includes major champions Chris Vye, Tom Smallwood, and Wes Malott. The most famous lanes in bowling, lanes 27, 28, right behind us here outside Akron. So happy you're with us tonight, Rob Stone. The Hall of Famers, Norm Duke and Randy Peterson here with you. Randy, how many years have you been doing this as color commentator? Longer than you thought I'd uh -huh. do it, 23 years. 23 years, in that two decades plus, have you ever witnessed anything like what we saw from West Malott last night? No, I mean, I racked my brain last night and this morning, and I've never seen anything like it. You know, guys, it's hard enough to beat the greatest in the world when you're 100%. I'm not sure West Malott is 50%. Forget about the back for just a second. He's already had multiple knee surgeries on the slide knee. He's got a bad elbow, and last night, well, he could barely bend over. So what did he do? He went to 14 pounds in his bowling equipment, and he lofted it halfway down the lane. I mean, he really showed us some serious moxie last night, didn't he, Norm? Oh, yeah, he did. I mean, it was an incredible performance. Hey, but to advance to tomorrow's finale, he's got to win eight games tonight against bowling behemoths. It's a tall order because maybe he can't even get through that physically. Yeah, by the way, the, the game seven and eight, should he advance, would come against two of the greatest talents this generation of bowling has witnessed, Kyle Troop and Jason Belmonte. Yeah, talk about two roadblocks, huh? I mean, Kyle Troop, what he did a couple years ago, all he did was break the single season earnings record just south of half a million dollars for a season. And then there's this guy, Jason Belmonte, who just collected his seventh player of the year honors, tying only the great Walter Ray Williams Jr. And Norm, uh, it wasn't that long ago that you said Jason Belmonte was the greatest player in the history of the sport. Uh, yeah, and who could argue that? I mean, my man's got 14 major titles already, eclipsing Walter Ray Pete, all, everybody. And he's not stopping. Uh, I think he's gonna rewrite all the record books. He's written a lot of them already. <laughs> Belmo in action a little bit later tonight. But our story begins here in hour one of four straight on FS1 with the big nasty, Wes Malott, who's standing by with our Kimberly Presley. Thanks, Rob. So, Wes, you made it through last night to get here in front of this amazing crowd. They're looking forward to seeing you bowl. But you walked in tonight holding a massage gun. So give us an update on your back. I mean, it's about the same as it's been all week, every day. Uh, mornings are definitely a little rough, but uh, you know, going through the motions, doing stretches, doing everything I can to be able to be here right now to perform at my best. Um, it's a little tight. I think adrenaline's going to take over probably like it did last night. I hope it does, and, uh, but I'm going to give it my all as I have all week. You got eight matches in front of you to get to tomorrow. You got a few more, more rounds left? No problem. I I'm going to go as long as it'll let me go. <laughs> he says it's no problem, so let's go with him. Guys? As we take a look at the step ladder for tonight's opening two hours of four, you get the feeling when Kimberly said to Wes, like, wait, eight? I have to win eight matches today? <laughs> there was a bit of a hiccup and a pause. My goodness, what a task he has in front of him, but should he do it? We're talking legendary status. We start with Smallwood and Malott, and Tom Smallwood will start us off. Winner of three PBA Tour titles so far, he rolls out of Northern Lanes in Sanford, Michigan, Number 12 seed, Tom Smallwood. Hey guys, can I, can I start this opening match with a hot topic that's going around the tour these days? Oh, I think I know where this is going. Uh, all right, so back in our heyday, right? And even Norm till 
he retired not long ago. We were using 16 pounders. 16 and pound bowling, bowling balls. balls. Yep. Yeah. And, and then the technology changed a bit, right? The bowling balls got stronger. Small was opening up for him. All 10 go down. Randy? So the bowling balls get stronger and the rev rates go up, the power goes up. And right after this intro, I'll continue. A PBA Hall of Famer, he bowls at MVP Lanes in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Number 14 seed, Wes Malott. All right, so maybe I picked a bad time to start this Yeah, topic. maybe let them bowl a frame uh, before so, you go into your storytelling. But here's, here's the point. Uh, Tom Smallwood's using 14 pounds. 14 pounds. So is Wes. Wes Malott, 14 pounds. Grunt and a groan, and he left the 10. To that point, Randy, you're talking back in the heyday, 16 pounds was the normal. 15 oh, yeah. has kind of been the new the, normal. The benchmark, yeah. Right? yeah. And, and through our meetings over the last couple of days, we've had uh, almost double-digit people come in, Norm, and say, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm down to 14. Yeah, and, and like, just last week, I went to 14 pounds. Right, everybody's just now going to it. But listen, there, we, not, we didn't have one person tell us that they used 16 pounds. When Randy and I were bowling on tour, if you didn't use 16 pounds, you were looking at an 810 two times around. Hey, and you know who started all this mess, Rob? Bill O'Neill. Bill O'Neill. <laughs> Billy, I know you're watching and listening in. Uh, yeah, Bill O'Neill kind of started this avalanche. The real deal. He's always been a bit of a trendsetter, hasn't he? He, yeah. I'll tell you what, he he's a very creative guy. We know that. And, when Bill O'Neill goes to 14 pounds, everybody, t they pay heat. Yeah, they get in line and follow, and again, right. Malott leaves that 10 pin. Major League West Rugby one. can be found on the Fox Sports app. It will return back. to FS2 once our bowling coverage moves over to FS1. Makes me wonder now, does Wes Malott carry either of those shots with 15 pounds or 16? Well, and, and that's, that's a great point. I mean, you know, that's, that's kind of what, what the first thing that comes to mind when you hear somebody goes to 14 pounds is the ball's still going to hit. I'm going to shoot flat 10s all oh day long, Oh, my Randy. God. There's me. a reason I threw 16-pound balls. Me, I'll, I'll be praying to get the eight out with that 10 pin. Well, I tell you, though, both of these guys and the others that we mentioned using 14 pounds, and we'll get more into that later on, all of them say no. I don't have any problem. My carry's actually better. Smallwood going with Jackal Ghost on both lanes. Dull ball on the right, shiny on the left. Messenger spinning in front of the 10. That's right. As you moved too far, probably. So four shots thrown, three 10 pins, guys, with the 14 pounders. Well, Tom Smallwood doesn't have any 15 pounders in his arsenal. No, he, he changed everything out. <laughs> he drilled a boatload of bowling balls. 30 some balls he drilled about two and a half weeks ago, and they are all at 14 pounds. As we take a look at tonight's Brunswick oil pattern, Randall, it is the Don Johnson 40. Of course, Don Johnson won this tournament back in 1970. Yeah, and who, who can forget that historic moment when he shot 299 right here on 27 and 28 back in 1970? You see where the players are expected to get to as this oil pattern breaks down. Early, they're gonna be a little bit straighter, more like in between second and third arrow. Still just one strike here in our opening match. Again, this is the beginning of four straight hours of TOC coverage here on Fox Sports. All right, take that back. Forget between second and third arrow, Norm. This yeah, is I was just going to say. fourth and fifth. This is the second shot that he's throwing in the left lane, and that thing is almost a 25 board. That's the third arrow on the left side of the lane. What that means is later on in this telecast, these players are going to be throwing it airborne. Yeah. They're going to run out of room. We know it already. Look at the rev rate is in front of us. Yep. If you want Loft, this is your guy this weekend. Yeah, he told us last night that he has to because he can't even bend his legs. I mean, the guy's 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and if he doesn't get any leg bend, it's going to be lofted. Ah, 
help, 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 help. Yeah, he got it right, and that outside part of the lane is slicker than an otter's pocket. You can see what happens when you get it to that spot. Any better. You said they'd be playing closer to the second arrow, that one there. He crossed second arrow pretty early and it never stopped uh, going right. Well, let's put it this way, guys. I didn't think they'd be into almost fifth arrow game one. No, I didn't either. No way. In fact, I thought they would set up a shot more in between second and third arrow and then try to stay right as long as possible. Pretty good cover. Four yeah. frames, one strike, seven spares. I've gotten this far to quit. I'm not a quitter. Let's go. Make that five spares. Sorry, math is hard. <laughs> <laughs> As we look at the West Malott crew, he's getting married in September, is Wesley. Did you get your invitation yet, Rob? Um, I, I think I gave him a, a wrong address, so I'm, I'm hoping he'll be there. Yeah, Wes, I don't think Wes is in the mood to hand out invitations right now. Well, and, and Norm, so many times we see that, right? Is, is it an overcompensation? You know, he misses wide right. The, the next thing that goes through the player's mind is, well, don't do that again. And then it's an overcompensation and a tug left. Yeah, and it's even worse when they miss right and miss hit. Because the next thing they're going to do is they're going to assure themselves that they hit it. They're definitely going to get full paw in it. Well, there's just the two clean uh, at that 40 foot mark. And if you get full hand, you miss any left at all, then it's going to it's going to breach Brooklyn. See Smallwood's numbers this week opened up this match with a strike. Since then, a pair of nine spares. Here he is to close out the fourth. So the three, six, nine, ten, and what makes it tough is that back in the nine pin, especially on this pattern where there is a lot of oil to the outside part of the lane. Now, if the outside part of the lane was dry, he would use that friction and get the ball to hook up into that no how to make this one. three pin and then drive the ball into the nine covering the six, ten. But because it's slick out there, it makes this three, six, nine, ten extremely difficult. Yeah, some of us would go directly straight at it, just like that. A lot. Great cover. Ooh, the eyes tell it all, huh? Yeah, I mean, a little, little luck as well, but that's why you go straight at it. You got two ways to make it. I mean, Norm, if you try to hook it at that spare, you could get zero both ways, right? You can miss it all three ways. You can chop, you can miss it right and left. If you throw it right at them and straight, there's really only one way to miss. Small wood crew. Almost looks like they've been held hostage for some reason. Got the black backdrop behind them, holding newspapers in front of their faces. Come on, man. Give the Smallwood family some respect. Actually, they are sitting right behind Tom. They got great seats for this one. Here's Tom, the 12 seed. Oh, oh my goodness, these issues continue. Still just one strike here. Hey, and you can see the difference in the two lanes showing up immediately. We talked about it last night where the right lane has a lot of friction, left lane's tighter. Yeah, the left lane is only really tighter long. Everybody's saying they're just tight on the back end on the left side. Well, doggone it, they got to get full hand. Jeez. Sorry, sorry, I misspoke. Left lane hooked more last night than the right lane, but now it looks like it's the reverse. Oh, Jesus, Thomas. Missed it, open frame. You can't see what you're looking at until your third step. <sighs> okay, guys, help me out. Because my mom is back home in Florida watching this. Hi, mom. She's saying, yeah, say hi to Joy. Say hi, hi to Joy. Bob, too. They're going to say, listen, we've watched enough bowling to know that near the end of the shows, the lanes get really troublesome and difficult. But why here in the opening game of this show is there, are there so many early issues? I don't think that they, they played right long enough and they got in so, so fast. There's really nothing to bank it up against. So if they miss right, it keeps going. They catch too much hand. There you go. First strike for Wes. Ball change as well. You know, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact of how the players break the lanes down in practice. Exactly. That's what I was meaning. I mean, yeah. if they stay far enough right long enough, they'll build some friction in that zone. Then they can move inside off of that and throw to that friction zone. But when they jump in immediately, this is what happens. 
Yeah, oftentimes when I was in practice prior to the show, I would not use the intended line until maybe two or three shots before we started. Yep. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't killing myself early. Let's go into the eternity. Yeah. It seemed like that one took an eternity to make the corner, didn't it? <laughs> it did. But the result, back-to-back -back jacks for Malat, and he's found himself. Only time Smallwood and Malat met on TV, guys. You remember it in 2009? Yeah. You know what it did? Yeah. It spawned a sitcom. That's coming up next. Love it. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Knock your initial mortgage rate down by up to 3% with Rate Reduce from Guaranteed Rate. Learn more at rate.com. Back inside a packed house here at Riviera Lanes. Plenty of Tom Smallwood fans in attendance. And Tom really shook up the bowling world back in 2009, December 13th in Wichita, Kansas. As a 32-year-old rookie, he dropped the reigning PBA Player of the Year. The guy he's taking on right now, West Malott, 244, 228. Yes, dreams do come true as Smallwood won the PBA World Championship. And that victory essentially created a sitcom. How We Roll, short-lived sitcom that made it on network television. And Tom, we talked to him about that win, you know, showed that he could do it. Gave him that giant boost of confidence. Felt like he belonged on the tour. And now he's got himself back into this game after a much needed strike. His first since the opening frame. Yeah, watch this footwork. Man, is that a huge drip to the left, Norman? Yeah, he just left just so he can project it to the right. There's a lot of bowlers that do that. Belmo's one of them. How many times have we seen that kind of look from him, whether it was off an open frame, a spare, or a strike, this, <sighs> I'm searching, I'm looking. That worked. Mm, that didn't work. I think that's going to be going on throughout the course of tonight. There's that really footwork lucky. again. Wow. Didn't pay off. That was so terrible, Thomas. Still got to throw it there. Uh, you can see 10 and a half board down lane, and that's just way too far left. Obviously, watch the crossover here. And even deeper at the arrows on that shot. Yeah, he got around that so quick, though. It was definitely not missing right. You know, when you get uh, the hand around the ball Appreciate early, the you're going to miss left more often yeah, than not. You want to stay underneath that ball a little bit longer, let it pass your legs, then you can live through it. You can get that side turn, and you can hit where you're looking. Yeah, don't turn it with your thumb still in it. Good point. Malat has turned this game around. Four straight spares and then strikes in the fifth and the sixth. He's up 23. Three straight. So different ball, a little straighter in my, it, 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 as far as what I'm seeing, Norm. Yeah, and you're seeing a little straighter. He's still bending this thing. I mean, it might be a little bit straighter, but look at the hand he gets in this ball. A couple of bounces. It's going to scoot to the right, and then here he comes. Looking for a four-bagger. Hates it. He'll take the result, though. Hambone for the big nasty. Yeah, he definitely missed left there. But I tell you what, I've been bowling with this guy for 10 years. And every time he says, ah, oh, ah, at the line, and he doesn't <laughs> like it, this thing strikes. It's just uncanny. I know you've seen it. Hey, upright, Mark. Don't bend. Tom needs a strike in the worst way here in the eighth. Down 43. Did you get it? Strike number three for Tom. 20 boards to cover. So 24 outs of five, four and a half, and then back. 
Yeah, that's see, a lot of territory. He did miss just a little bit right there, but he got full hand in it, so here it comes. Guys, tomorrow over on Fox, the NASCAR Cup Series heads to the high banks in Atlanta. Do you know what that means, Norm, the high banks? I have no Atlanta. idea what high right. banks. Uh, full throttle pack racing. Do you know what that means? No, sir. All right. Uh, well, it's going to be on display. So if you like things that Norm and I don't understand in NASCAR, tomorrow's the place for you in Atlanta. Every turn will be live as the engines fire up tomorrow, 3 Eastern on Fox. I need to get myself to a NASCAR race. I've never done that. I'd love to do that at some point. Smallwood with a must try. Yeah, down 43, looking for his first double, and he will not find it. Well, that 10 pin has been nasty tonight. Yeah, a lot of weak tens here in game one. Missed it. And it's over. Yep. Lloyd well, Kane, fucking CD. Fucking awesome. Tough outing for Tom Smallwood. Not at all what he wanted. It started off great with that strike. <laughs> Open frame in the fifth and there in the ninth. And Wes Malott, the 14 seed, will move on. Up next for him will be the 11 seed, Chris Bai. So a pair of minor upsets here during March Madness, bowling style. As Malat moves on. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. I mean, we talked about it earlier. Look how far out that ball got, got to the half board. About guys throwing in the gutter from way inside oh, from way inside and we've seen this you know the last four days out here they if they miss it at all and they get it really opened up toward the gutter sometimes it just walks right in there but he got plenty to win the, the match so 51 up <laughs> the one two five seven eight it's not something you spare every day is, is that what that was Yep, so Wes Malott has moved on. There's still a frame to go, guys, but Wes Malott has the numbers in his favor, so the big nasty, the 14 seed, will move on. Coming up next for him, a meeting with Ohio native Chris Vi, your 11 seed, Malott Vi, coming up here next at the TOC. A look at the final numbers as Wes Malott, your 14 seed, with a 40 pin win over 12 seed Tom Smallwood, 196, 156. Ooh, flashback time. Randy, yeah. who's that young man? I don't know, with man. With the facial hair. Yeah, he's got some great facial fescue going. April 94, TOC, historic Riviera. Norm Duke dropping Eric Forkel, 217, 194. Norm, your second major win. Wait a second, that's me. That is so you. That was not you at the end. No. Only time you won the TOC. Yeah. Slacker. I probably wouldn't won that one, but <laughs> Eric Forkel threw a gutter ball in a turkey about about the seventh frame, and it changed everything. <laughs> things, hey, you need things to go your way sometimes. Yeah, majors, you do. Right? You need those breaks. And some might say Wes Malott got a break. Tom Smallwood was certainly not on his game with that 156. So Wes Malott, over the course of two evenings, has now won three straight head-to-head -head matchups. Can he make it four straight as he gets set to take on this man, Chris Bai, your number 11 seed? They are still going through the final practice shots. Hey, guys, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's going to take a lot more than 196 to beat Chris Bai. No question. I've been watching this ball go through the pins, and it's just hammering on him right now. Well, as soon as I say that. Oh. That's a good thing it was practice. Welcome he's, to my world, Norm. Yep, hey, nope. he's just practicing on his more. bucket spares. I got one more. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm going to start. Hey, Rob. Rob, yes, how many sir. hours are we doing? Four straight right. hours. What? I like how Wes right now is kind of lurking in the background. The, the light kind of softly hitting time? him. He's on the practice on bear the over to the uh, to, to the left of us. To the left of us. Yeah, to the right of the actual right race. Of, right. Yeah, so this is the nasty making his way over here. I mean, the guy's got a bad back. Can't we get him a caddy to carry that that gear? He's got kids. He's got a strong son who could come over here and right? hold that for him. 
All right, let's get our introductions. He's the 2021 U.S. Open champion, bowling out of Northridge Lanes in Springfield, Ohio. Number 11 seed, Chris Vai. Great, Chris Vai is a big guy. And Malad just gave him a hug, and Chris Vai disappeared. I know. He's not the only person who disappeared when Wes Malat gives you a hug. <laughs> Norm. <laughs> Norm, you disappear when I I've give you a hug. It. I've done it. And Bye. Chris, I'm sorry, go ahead, bro. <laughs> Chris going with a phase five to start his opening match against the Big Nasty. And, and Norm, again, we talked about it uh, in game one. Look how deep the players are. This is game two. Where do they go from here? Airborne. Well, Wes is already going airborne. How much more airborne can he go? Well, he's doing it because his back's back. Correct, but. It's also helping getting his ball to, to get down the lane, to clear the front part of the lane. But once you get far enough left, there is no lay down. And what Norm is saying is in order to keep the ball in the field of play, you have to throw it over the gutter. Over the check. And now in Tokyo one year, I watched him and Robert Smith throw it 35 feet down the lane, and they did it for a whole game, and they were striking a lot. So. I think Wes can get it I'm airborne. And those lanes were never the same after that. Huh? They weren't. Maximum Bob and the Big Nasty. Oh. My goodness. Big thud, strong crash, 10 in the pit. So Wes is starting to figure things out. Remember, the opening match, first four frames were spares, and then he caught fire with four straight strikes starting in the fifth. By that time, the damage had been done as we take a look at his form. Yeah, you can see just how much straight up and down he is here. There's very little upper body to lean or tilt. And now you can see how, the, how high off the ground he has to release the ball because of that. He can't get down to the floor. Wesley. Very fortunate to, to just leave the one, two. Let it roll. Foot roll off your fingertips. Come on. It was just a miss hit at the bottom, right, Norm? I would imagine. I mean, he knew what happened early. I kind of didn't. All I know is when he says Wesley. Yes, you that's know. That's not good. That's a, that's a trigger word. That's the only, the only two people I know that call him that is Sarah and I. <laughs> he was saying it. He, he only said it once or twice last night, but I wrote it down, too. There it is on the top of my sheet. Wesley. Trouble. Uh oh. Wesley covered that Caught. one. So if I has problems, you're going to hear a Christopher. Christopher. I like how Wes slowly drops his body into that chair. Have you noticed that yeah, over yeah, the last couple of nights? Kind of eases himself in he it. He is using all of those armrests. Not a lot of chair there for him. <laughs> There's enough for two Norm Dukes in that <laughs> That's <chair>. right. <laughs> all right, Chris Fye, right lane. Oh. There you go. It's a nine spare strike for Vi. That's 15 pounds, a lot of revs going through those pins. Yeah, and that was right on top of where Smallwood was playing him. Uh, Malat's a little bit further right, but he's also airborne half the time. And completely different ball roll. Tom Smallwood actually throws a full roller where the track goes in between the fingers and thumb. Chris Vi, a heavy three-quarter roll. a solid nine on that hit. Norm would have left a solid nine on that hit. This guy has twice the revs that we do. There's uh, Mama Vi, and, and he gets the nine to go. It's probably 15 pounds. All right, that that right there, Angie Vi, there's Dad Craig. That's his niece, Kenzie, of the uh, Vi family. Yeah. That, you know, like, if you're taking a picture of somebody who looks like a nurturing mom or a grandma, you know, that's, yeah. that, that kind of fits the profile. We got more on her in just a second. Here's Malat to close out the third. So his second strike, so he's gone strike, eight spare, strike. So there was a ball change on the right lane for Wes Malati goes to an RST X2. Which of course means... Uh, I, wait, I know it, I know it. Just give me a second. 
get off your phone and don't come just, up with the just, answer. Just give me a second. Come on. I got it. It's right here. It's on the tip of my tongue. Mm -hmm. um, it stands for Rotostar Tour. RST. There. There, take that. Yeah, the same ball on that lane, but crosses over. I don't think he got it far enough to the right, Norman. I don't either, and he's given us a look like it checked when it landed. Now, every shot he's thrown so far has bounced in the air quite a bit. Let's see if this one bounces right there. No, that didn't bounce near as high. So, I don't know. Maybe this ball's different in that manner. And again, you can see the friction on that left lane, right? Oh, yeah, you can see the ball turn up. All right, remember, we showed you Chris Vai's mom, Angie, in the stands. There's more to her game. She's got game, Look, by the she's way. She's got I, so I, much game. I gotta, be, I gotta be honest, I'm a little disappointed in Mama Vi. Yeah, you, you're not alone, and you're gonna, our viewers I'll out wait, there are I'll, gonna I'll understand you, why we're disappointed in a second. I'll let you take it. No, 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 Kimberly's gonna do the, oh, okay. do the story justice. Kimberly's gonna do it? Yeah, yeah, here's Vi. Bottom of the fourth, and gets all oh. 10 to go. Oh, so that's three in a row now for Vi. No, that's, that's Mom. So Kimberly, uh, give us the lowdown there on Mama Vi. Well, as you guys were mentioning, Mama Vi, she's actually kind of famous in the bowling world for her home-baked cookies that she's been bringing to Chris's competition since high school. And Chris joked with us that his reason that he's so popular is because of his mom's cookies. So I spoke to Angie, or as you guys mentioned, the players call her Mama Vi, and she told me that she makes them to give the bowlers a sense of home. And don't worry, Rob and Randy, I put your request in for snickerdoodles and chocolate chip cookies already. Yeah, what? no nuts. Wait, no what? nuts. Don't, when, don't, when don't do any of those nuts in my cookies. When is that coming? Yeah, not today. Beautiful oh, Four in a row for Vi. Mama Vi's happy. She's cooking up cookies. Chris is serving up a ham bone. I'd give some cookies to Westman a lot right now because he just threw a four-bagger at him early. West down by 30. You see that lay down? That's like, what, 31? Or excuse me, uh, 37, yeah, 38. You got to get the math in to know where you're laying it down. 30, when 39 you're boards on the right. 39 boards across the lane, and he's using all of them. Oh, oh West way right of target. Seven drops late to make this an easier pickup, but things are getting to be in a precarious spot for the big nasty here. He's won three straight, but number four is looking to be mighty challenging. And that one was dancing with the gutter for a second. that one registration for the inaugural 2023 PBA LBC National Championships. It is now open to all bowlers, all skill levels from all centers, and it's coming your way this summer from beautiful Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can compete in singles as well as optional doubles and some team events are out there. You can even combine your scores with the pros and you can enter today at PBA.com and the trophy for it, Randy, is the Duke. It's beautiful. Oh my Aww. goodness. Do, do, do you get a replica of that? If not, let's work on that. Okay, I like that. Yeah, I think I think you deserve one. It's only you, after all. There you go, Wes. Boy, needed that one. So strikes now in the first, third, and sixth frames for Malat. But he is down more than 30 here in our second match of the evening. We're still in hour one of four straight here from the TOC just outside of Akron, Ohio. We welcome you back inside historic Riviera Lanes. Sad note in bowling as Jim Doty, the Hall of Famer, Norm, passed away back on March 4th at the age of 73. Oh, what a great proprietor. Indianapolis at Woodland Bowl. We've been there many, many years. More majors there than anywhere. Yeah, the only center in, uh, in PBA history to host all five majors. And all of them. Jim Doty was the... He was the catalyst. Not to, not to mention a great guy. Yeah, and inducted into the hall in 2019 for his meritorious service. So our condolences go out to the Doty family. And, and Jim, I know you're watching from upstairs and listening. Thank you for everything you did for this sport. It is appreciated. 
We welcome you back to match two tonight. Again, we are with you live until 11.30 p.m. Eastern-ish. Who knows, maybe we'll go along too. Vi to close out the sixth. My goodness, he is on a tear right now. That is five straight, so we are currently in the midst of a PAP six-pack alert. Yeah, turn on the sirens. If Vi strikes here, he's going to win 1000 bucks. sponsored by PAP's Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please remember to drink responsibly. Let's be honest. We thought we would have a lot of PAP six-pack alerts earlier today. We thought we'd see some high scoring, but it has been a bit of a struggle early on. But we have got hours left of our coverage of the TOC here tonight. I'm betting the do here. You got it? You think yeah. we're going to crack open a six-pack? I six got pack? The pass line here. All right. Message in! Oh, this is the six pack. God, Come on, never man. Win. So in the mood for a PBR. Watch the head pin right in front of you. Goes to the sidewall and right in front of the 10. Yep. We feel your pain, Chris. That was like opening a flat can of beer. Oh. You know? So, I just want to make this clear. We've been denied homemade cookies. Yeah. And now a PBR six pack. Yeah, all courtesy of bowling. <laughs> 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 oh, man. What, what could have been about this Saturday night, right? That's all right. That's all right. Big Nasty will get us back going here. What a great story. I mean, Wes Malott thought about bailing out of this competition numerous times because yep. of that back issue. Same and, thing. He won twice last night. Got a win earlier today over Tom Smallwood, and now trying to rally down 41 here in the seventh to take care of Chris Vi. Trust me, I know. Doing some arts and crafts work over there. Used to like you. Still do. Is he talking? Is he talking to Vi right there? No, he's talking to a PBA official that. Basically said, well, uh, you know, you have to do the tape first, otherwise it's a shot clock violation. And he said, yeah, I know. Been here. To, this, this isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> no, no. This is his 22nd year on the tour. Ten titles, one major. Malat, the 14th seed. Bounce, bounce. Find a target. I got that spot figured out, that's for sure. <laughs> and again, we see that Goodness. out of bounds area. You get it too far to the right. And... A lot of slickness on the outside of this pattern on both sides. And he missed it. Chris Vi is. Uh essentially going on here. Numbers haven't added up quite yet, but Stu Williams, the 10 seed, waiting in the wings as we take a look at strike track 3D. Randall? Yeah, Chris Vi, the red ball, Malat, the blue one. You can see how much deeper Chris Vi is. And if you saw that number, 39.4, that's because he's as deep as you can get. And because of that, has to loft it over the gutter. There you go, Wesley. If he laid it down Come at 39 on, and a half. That's zero. It's zero. Don't let me hold you down. Come on. Appreciate that from Wesley. A nice touch there to get the crowd re-engaged. Chris Vi deserves it. Up 53 as he closes out the eighth frame. Five straight strikes starting in the second frame propelled him to this giant lead. Back on the strike train after that nine spare in the seventh. Yeah, he's going to move on, and that's the way it is. Yeah, in convincing fashion, I might add, I look at that scoreboard, Chris Vi, really the only errant shot was the first shot in frame one. Six strikes, two nine spares. 
Vi begins the ninth. Missed the head pin. Well, you know, back in the day, we would play this pattern a little differently, but we had different equipment to play the pattern. So yeah, what I see here is the reason the scores are so low is they're carrying that oil from in to out. And they're just depositing on the right side of the lane, right about where that blue streak stops. Now, after they deposit some oil right there, it becomes hang. We call that carry down. Yep. And that's what makes that ball miss the head pin if they miss hit it just a pinch. I mean, they're just so steep through the front part of the lane. Nice pickup by Vi. And guys, according to the numbers, the players are deeper here in game two than they were in game four last night. Wow. Yeah, and the explanation I have is rev rate. Just rev rate. The more rev rate you have, the deeper they're going to get quicker. And then we talked about it early. They didn't set up the lanes. Uh, in a situation where they would stay right as long as they could in order to keep it right. Stu Williams and Jake Peters waiting in the wings. After that, how about some of the names we still have to go tonight here yeah. at the TOC? Marshall Kent, Jason Belmonte, Kyle Troop. So it is official. Vi has moved on. <laughs> West misses that one. No, <laughs> well, won't count. Oh. I mean, I think we should just give it to him anyway. I'm going. Are you going to tell him? I'm not. That he didn't spare? No. I'll call him Wesley. I think Wesley is, you know, he's gone through the stages of grief already in this game. You know, I think he's now at acceptance, understands it. Yeah. And there's Chris Vi returning the favor to Wes. Yeah. yeah. The Hall of Famer deserves it. Oh, he's one of the kindest individuals you'll ever met. I, you'll ever meet. You know, it looks like he's mean. Oh no, he's just a big teddy bear. We saw him get emotional last night. And you never know when we're going to see him again. You just don't know how that back is going to hold up. 46 years old, 22nd year on the tour, 10 titles, one major. A lot of class being showed by both players. For sure. What a great gesture by. Chris Vi, for sure. Now, Wes is one of our favorites. And early congratulations, Wes, getting married in September. To Sarah. Yep. Jim, Sarah we love you, baby. Attendance. We love you, Jim. This one's for you, kid. There's the Malott family there. Oh, this is nice. Big Nasty deserves this. Do it. Come on, 10. He's done with the 172. Gutsy. Out of her arm, man. Out of her arm. Out of her Thank you. That means a lot. Yep. Yep, good stuff. Thank you, Wes. Way to gut it out. Now, we got more from Wes than we thought we would get for sure. So the Cinderella run of Wes Malott is over. The 14 seed has been eliminated. The 11 seed, Chris Vi, moves on. Next up for him, the 10 seed, Stu Williams. And you guys, nicknames, uh, a staple of our youth, also here on the PBA Tour as well. PBA nicknames come your way next. Fairlawn, Ohio, and FS1's live coverage of the PBA Tournament of Champions. Night number two of three. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Norm Duke, Kimberly Pressler here with you. One of the great things about the tour, about sports, is that nearly every competitor has a nickname, and that is the subject of tonight's pressing questions with Kimberly Pressler, presented by Go Bowling. Chris, do you have a nickname? Uh, probably a few of them, but I'm not sure how many we can talk about here. Jacob, do you got a nickname? Yeah, uh, everybody on tour, they call me Butters. It's either Butters or Buttercup. I do have a nickname, so I got the squirrel quite a few years ago. Jason, you got a nickname? Uh, Belmar. Yeah, it's just the simple one, half of my last name. Easy to remember. We call DJ Natural Born sometimes. Why? 
because he gambles and he's a natural born loser. All right, Dick Allen, talk to me about nicknames. Do you have one? Dick. And THB. Typical house bowler. So, had that one for a long time. Yeah, they called me the real deal. Uh, I've had it for a long time. My college coach gave it to me, and uh, I'm not really a, a fan of it, but um, it rhymes, so it's stuck for a long time. Kyle, what is your nickname? Ah, uh, pro with the fro. And who has the best nickname on tour? Me. Yeah, I'll go with my boy Jesper. He's the Iceman. I like the Iceman. The Iceman? I like that. Do you think it's a fitting name for you? Yeah. Calm, collected. Tom, what is your nickname? Um... TD, pretty much. Some people call me Rebel. Does anybody call you Mr. 100? Not anybody that I like, no. <laughs> hey, it was good to see Tom Doherty on the shows this week. <laughs> love you, TD. I'm sorry. I love you, Mr. 100. Here's how Tom got that nickname. Yeah, we're flashing back. January 2011, Vegas, the PBA TOC in the semi match. Tom against Mika Kuniemi. And Tom rolled seven splits en route to a record low of 100. The previous low in a PBA televised event was 129. And we celebrated that 100 like it was a 300. The 300 that Mika missed by that 10 pin in the same game. Same game. Insane emotions, Mr. 100, Major Mika, Randy Peterson, Norm Duke, Rob Stone, back here with you. That was a fun. Oh that was a fun goodness. afternoon. Oh, you and I called. So fun. And Tom, he is such a great sport about it, you know. And then it, he let Mika take center stage, and I'll be dang, yeah. Mika almost pulled it off. But he did win a cool quarter of a million dollars and the Tournament of Champions victory. And he's uh, he's in PBA history, uh, the <laughs> the largest margin of victory ever. Yeah. 199 pins. So yeah. he beat he beat Tom Doherty by how many pins? 199. <laughs> sorry, TD. 199. So sorry. Mr. 100 lost by one. Maybe his title should be 199. Mr. Mr. Negative 199. I got my face hurt. Oh, oh, Tom Doherty, oh. my friend of me, my friend of me. Love these nicknames. Uh, what's what's Stu's nickname? Beef Stew. Beef Stew. Yeah, coming up next, your 10 seed, Stu Williams, taking on Chris Vi when our coverage of the TOC here on FS1 comes your way next. Rugby has moved over to FS2. It is now all about bowling till 11.30 p.m. Eastern tonight here on FS1. Welcome back to FS1's coverage of the PBA Tournament of Champions. 35th year it has been held here inside historic Riviera Lanes. Rob Stone, Norm Duke, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler here with you. We'll also be with you tomorrow over on Fox. Our coverage starts at noon for the final five here at the TOC. Your number one seed, EJ Tackett. Your two seed, Anthony Simonson. And one survivor from tonight's activities will join that field of final five. So we started off the evening with Wes Malott, your 14 seed, taking care of Tom Smallwood by 40 pins, 196, 156. So Malott with that bad back moved on to our second showdown. The 11 seed, Chris Vi, and Vi a huge run of strikes midway through the match as Malott waved goodbye to the TOC, losing 247 to 172. As you take a look at the updated stepladder bracket, so it's Vi moving on to match number three of this two-hour window. The winner to take on Jake Peters. And then we reload with another two-hour show where you'll see such talents as Marshall Kent, Jason Belmonte, and Kyle Troop. Winner of two PBA Tour titles so far. He rolls out of Mel's Lone Star Lanes in Georgetown, Texas. Number 10 seed, Stuart Williams. <laughs> See Stu's arsenal right there. He's using the absolute. It's close. Oof. Nice break with that seven dropping late. That's a pretty good stop. Norm, question for you. Yeah. Uh, 15 years as a pro, Stu, uh, Stu Williams. 
Only two titles. Surprised? Well, I mean, look at the error that he's been bowling in. I mean, when you got Jason Belmonte just robbing everybody at titles, you know, it's kind of like living in the Tiger right. area in golf. Uh, you just can't, you can't produce a whole lot of them. Now, am I surprised? Yeah, two titles, he should have more. However, you got to learn this. I mean, I was out here for 10 years, only had one title, Randy, and I ended up winning a lot more. So maybe it's just a learning experience for him. Chris Vai, also with just one title, but it was a major. He won the 2021 U.S. Open when it was held in Reno. Three, four, six, and seven. And the idea is to get the ball over here just right of that three pin, cut it into the four and the seven. The ball will take care of the six. Look out. Yeah, loses count. Oh, sorry. Well, he still loses count, but he wasn't working on any mark. It's the TOC. Every pin matters. Yeah, I mean... You know, at, my, at this point, I think you go for the spare, but you kind of want to get eight out anyway. Right. Maybe I mean, even I, nine I, out, but but you still got to go for it. Hey. Oh, a lot more lop on this one. Good shot. So you may ask yourself, well, why is he playing them now with a little more law? Well, because Stu Williams just got up there and he threw eight shots and then Jake Peters came over and he, he threw eight shots. So they've had almost a game and a half bold with tremendous rev rate while they were sitting. Or excuse me, where, where when Vi was sitting. God, that was terrible. I think he hits the one board. Yeah, watch this lay down right there. It's way left at the arrows. And he was lucky to catch a piece of the head pin, guys. Yeah, everybody's playing a little bit of loft so far. Not Stu, a beef Stu, he laid it down right at his foot. And where that matters is he, if he has to move in any, he's gonna have to start lofting. And he can do it, it's not a problem. Yep. So a pair of nine spares to open up for Williams. Guys, interesting story about his unique follow-through, and we're gonna see it in this next shot. His abbreviated follow-through. You know what, where it stems from? From lawn bowling in England. Really? Yeah, it's what he told us today. Okay, wow. Have you ever done lawn bowling, Randy? Never, never. No, no I've never seen it. R really? I grew up on the bowling tour, man. Well, that's true, <laughs> but I mean, it's so close. There's great lawn bowling not too far from us uh, down in the Youngstown, Ohio area. Check out the follow through here, guys. Look at him looking right down at the foul line. Look at that short follow through. It's like he's feeding it, you know, like a Frisbee. Little flick fling. He was telling us that the, the balls are actually like bocce balls in size. Same size, yeah. And they're weighted. So if you turn it one side, they'll curve to the right. You turn it the other way, they curve to the left. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's what he said, but yeah, I still cool. couldn't visualize what he's, he's bowling on. I mean, is it the front lawn? Back yeah. lawn? It's like a putting green almost. Yeah. Okay, a putting green. Like right. a hard putting green, yep. hardly any grass to, to slow you down. Chris Vyes made a ball change to Dark Moss. You like, are you, you hip with that name, Rob? No, not violent enough. Wolverine Dark Moss, how Better. about that? Better, Okay. Dude. This is gonna be a challenge. This will be a challenge. Two, eight, 10. 
He's actually starting in front of the bar turn. Look at that, guys. Rob, three steps. He's yeah. abbreviated his approach, and that's so that he can get far enough left. Yeah, most of the players will actually walk left to yeah. the ball return and then pivot. And yeah, we saw that from Tom Smallwood in our opening match. We I call it a broken walk. But some players are uncomfortable breaking their walk. They like to have the same direction yeah. every time. Voss was one of those in yep. the heyday that did. he would stand in front. Barnes. Uh, Pete Weber, though, he'll go around it, and so will a number of others. It's just two ways to play it. But I'll tell you what, he liked that shot on that lane. You yep. hear him say, nice shot. Well, when you're changing to three steps, it's kind of hard to tell whether, you know. I, I never liked walking left. I never liked uh, taking three or four steps out of yeah. my approach, so there you are. So my only my only option was getting in front of the bar return. They should just move them back. They shouldn't be on the approach at all. There you go. Well, Vi likes that left lane a heck of a lot better. A pair of strikes there, but a pair of open frames on the right, and that's why Stu Williams has this 25-pin lead. I'm not sure he's still, uh, or I'm not sure he's quite confident in the ball change because he kind of gave that shot there a look. Yeah, that look. <sighs> and then, of course, when you're not sure, what do you do? You go to uh, your tour rep. Better. Ooh. Oh, goodness. No, I left the eight pin. Yeah. The crowd's yelling, hey, Randy. Mine was the eight pin. Randy's the eight pin. Not the nine pin. Oh, he just pured this. And what? how does a 15 ball, mm -hmm. ground ball, hit a pin and not knock it over? Well, hang on a minute. I brought that up the last game with Chris Vi. Higher rep rate than Stu. Agreed? Yeah. OK. That's Higher rep good. rate. His ball goes high, Come high on. flush, and he carries the nine pin. Remember, I said Norm and I would have left the nine pin. Well, guess right. what? Stu just did. Right, but his ball actually hit the nine pin and wiggled it around and didn't knock it over. So if you stand a pin down, you can thump it and get it to fall. I want to welcome you to the Beer Frame, sponsored by our great partners, Paps Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ask for the original and please drink responsibly. The fifth frame, the Beer Frame. Sponsored by PBR. That's good. Stu Williams will start the fifth with the strike. His Bad first good shots. here Come in on. match number three. The guy Flat that's me, won in 10 different countries. Isn't that crazy? I mean, 300 in 14 different countries. Titles all over the world. But struggles here in the US. Why? Competition that much tougher here. Oh, the beer frame paying off dividends. Pair of strikes as both Williams and Vi get all 10 to fall. Well, there's, there's Mama Vi. Beer frame, most popular frame in the world of bowling. You know what? Maybe the, the six should be the cookie frame. Start that, the cookie frame, Mama Vi, firing off cookies for everybody in the sixth frame. Okay. You get a snickerdoodle. You get oatmeal and chocolate chips. I want nuts. But that tiger in the background gets yeah, nothing. I, I, we need it. Can Kimberly Pressler find out more about this tiger in the background? Back to back, to back, Jax, for Vi. So that's a three bagger. And now it's a four pin game. So Vi, after real struggles with open frames in the first and the third, has reeled off three straight. It is a tight one here in match number three at the TOC. Inside historic Riviera Lanes here in Fairlawn, Ohio, just west of Akron, just south of Cleveland. And FS1's continuing live coverage of the Tournament of Champions, the sixth event of this PBA season. And the TOC, one of five majors contested here on the Professional Bowlers Association Tour. Finals live tomorrow on Fox. We know our final four. We still have about two and a half more hours to determine who will be the one left standing tonight that will join 
tomorrow's final five. Stu Williams, the 10 seed, trying to be that man. He's up four pins on Chris Vi. This is a tight one here as we close out the sixth. Oh, oh man, leaves the 10. Have both. Yeah, that was a good shot. Can't be a nine pin on a ring 10. Come on. That's a pretty good shot. Yeah, Tracer, man, that's awesome. See that lay down norm? Not a whole lot of room left. No, and I tell you what, he didn't need any room. He put it right on top of the stripe before it. Good spare. That's his fifth nine spare of the game. Perfect on those 10 pin spares this week. Our thanks to Lane Talk for those stats. These two met earlier this week in a match play, and it was Stu getting the 20 pin win. The lead currently at four, but it's Vi sitting down, waiting his effort in the seventh. And he is riding some momentum, three straight strikes. Nice action there. Both his strikes coming on that left lane. So lazy. Yeah, when he says lazy, he just means it's not popping on the back end and going right to left. It's kind of, ah, ah. So, yeah, feels lazy to the bowler. By the native of Springfield, Ohio, about three hours southwest from where we are here in Fairlawn. Comes. Yeah, that's a four bagger for Vi. What is that? Wait, wait, uh, what? WRWJ tribute, a four bagger. Okay. We'll give it to you this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll be in front of this ball return the rest of the day. Now, maybe he will get left of it. I don't know. I've done it once, but yeah, he's Norm, those are baby steps. Yeah. That, oh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a tiny bit of terrain to build up the proper energy to launch that orb. Yeah, you need to be in good shape, and he is. And now he can kind of let the leg stretch on that left lane. Oh, oh boy. And this is going to be a big challenge for Vi. Hang down lane on the lane that's supposed to hook more, but I think all the hook is early, isn't it? Yeah, all the hook is early. They, they've even commented that the, the back part of the left lane is slicker. Oftentimes, that's just a little bit of topography. Oftentimes, it's just carry down. It's who bowled before you. He's missed the 210 all five times this week. Oh, what a pickup! Come on! No brainer, spare the game. Sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Lower your initial mortgage rate by 3% with rate reduce from guaranteed rate, bringing your mortgage rate down hard. What a pickup by Vi. <laughs> Remember that shot when it's all said and done here in match number three. Williams looking for his first double, and he'll find it. Wow. Energy That's back so in the house. I mean, I think he's making some great shots. Man. It, 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 I mean, if you I'm look back at what he's done, a 10 pin, what then he went high, he let the four pin, then the solid nine, another 10 pin in the six, and then strikes around it. But I think he's executing very nicely. Now if he can just get the pins to cooperate. No doubt, and he got that thing to peel left from oh, spots so that, that Wes Malott was getting ah. missed, missed the head pin, missed the head pin, missed the head pin. Two frames to go, six pins separate these two. The winner to take on Jake Peters, your nine seed. Big shot here. Right of target. Oh. Ah. He turned it early too. It far enough right. He didn't get it far enough right. Damn you. Our coverage of the TOC continues tomorrow, noon Eastern, over on Fox. The final.
five. Again, EJ Tackett, your one seed. That is what Williams is staring down. And an open frame in the ninth. Brutal time for it. Not only that, he loses the count. That's one of the reasons I shoot that from the pocket side, which is the right side for right-handers, and I'll take a little cutter in there, mainly because of the count. If you miss it on the left, you can't get more than eight normally. Oh, remember we were talking in the first frame when this man, Chris Fye, had that open frame norm? He went for the spare. Yeah. Instead, it was an open frame. He ended walking away with seven pins, and we said every pin matters at the TOC. Oh, Vi was way left of target. Got a late tap of the 10. And a big break right here. Having that 10 pin go late, just a single pin spare attempt coming up for Chris Vi. So after those four straight strikes, it's been a pair of spares for Chris Vi, Mama Vi in attendance. Hopefully her son can uh, cook up another win here. Think she knows uh, the score? Think she knows she's on television? Yeah. Yeah, there's the niece, Kenzie, getting some airtime. Yeah, get Pops in there, Craig. Team Vi over the state of OH. Pop knows the score. Pops does. There you go, 19 to fill. So nine spare strike does it. Strike on the first ball right here would be big. Got a hook. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Guess who's back in it? Beefcake. Look at these numbers, folks, right here. We'll get those numbers back up in a second. Yeah, right? I mean, it was kind of a big deal, right? I mean, his huge right miss. Well, you need 19 fill, you get five. Another look, guys, right here. There you go. Thank you. So he has to spare this to have a shot. Yeah. What a cover! <laughs> what a cover! Man. That is clutch bowling. Yeah, re-rack it up, you bet. Catch your breath, Chris Vi. He has had some epic shots these last couple frames. He's really just hanging on by a thread, isn't he? And I mean, that's not a, an easy spare to pick up. And remember, Rob, Not an easy spare to pick up on an average day. Uh, yeah, right, and, and Rob, remember you, just a few minutes ago, you were talking about counts. Yeah, he needs all of these. Well, that makes Stu Williams' job a little bit easier, but he still needs two strikes in the 10th frame. Two and six for Stu Williams to advance. Vi is done with a 193. Man, talk about extended life for Stu Williams, right? Yeah, and the difference between two and six and two and eight. Big. Big. Especially on this. Oh, Boy, the pendulum of momentum in right? this match has been crazy. Back and forth, back and forth. Bounced it. Yeah, I just don't think that was a very good shot. No, you, you know, Stuart Williams has been throwing the ball where it just, you can barely hear it in the lane, and you hear it that time, we should bam, bam. Love you, Brady. And that delays Sorry. the hook? Yeah. That's yeah, too bad. So Chris Vi will move on Hi, with that 193, 176 win. He took care of Wes Malott. Just dropped Stu Williams. Now can he get by Jake Peters and continue this run up this unprecedented 17-man step ladder? Jake Peters, now living just outside of Vegas in Henderson, is your nine seed. Peters, Vi, next.
The on-lane graphics you see tonight, including the ball tracer, courtesy of our great friends at Clutch Bowling. Welcome me back inside Riviera Lanes. Fairlawn, Ohio, still to come later tonight here live on FS1. This collection of talent, Marshall Kent, Andrew Anderson, Jason Belmonte, Kyle Troop. That is a slew of former players of the year, including the reigning player of the year, Jason Belmonte. Who will join this cast of characters later tonight here on FS1? Will it be that man, your nine seed, Jake Peters, who right now is experiencing by far his best ever tournament of champions. He has 11 seed Chris Vi when our live coverage of the TOC here on FS1 returns. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Knock your initial mortgage rate down by up to 3% with rate reduced from Guaranteed Rate. Learn more at rate.com. And by Go Bowling. For friends and family fun, log on to gobowling.com to find a center near you. We welcome you back inside Riviera Lanes here in Fairlawn, Ohio. Our continuing coverage of the PBA Tournament of Champions. One of five majors contested here on the PBA Tour. He owns one PBA Tour title so far and bowls at South Point Bowling Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Number nine seed, Jake Peters. One of the nicest humans on the tour. Oh, no doubt. Won the last two installments of the Steve Nagy Sportsmanship Award. Good patience. This man has been through a lot in life. Process. And if you're not cheering for him, so. something's wrong with you. Jake's got some heavy lifting to do right out of the gates. Yeah, that left lane's been pretty tricky all night long and the good news for Jake Peters is it's frame one and he doesn't have to finish on that lane. But let's bring up the C word again. Count. Nah, I go for the spare here. I don't worry about count at this point. Now, I do want to get nine of them instead of for eight. For sure, for sure. Yeah. I'm going for the spare as well, but right. you better at least walk out of here with two. Ah, that's zero now. And he got two. I'll tell you what, I thought he would miss them all, but <laughs> he, he did catch the four bin just enough to get the split out of that. So nine out, is, he'll take it. The problem here is this pair has gotten ugly. In fact, I'm reading moving all the way out to the right and, and playing lay left because of all the carry down they've built. It's hard to get it around. We have coverage of this match uninterrupted. And then, Norm, they're going to re-oil it. The right and the left for our final four matches of the evening. So Vi starts that one with a strike. Remember, he had an open frame to start his last match against Stu Williams. Hey, Randy. Yeah. The tiger is watching. It's got the eye of the tiger. See that? Back to back opening jacks for Chris Fi. Looked like more loft, and he gave that one the business. He did. And you know, for, for guys like uh, Belmo and Chris Vi, uh, Troop, the two handers that can get loft under, they're, they're going to keep going left. It's not, it's not beneficial for them to move out. But for guys like Jake Peters, uh, a Francois Lavoie means we can't get that loft, at least not that much. And we can't get that rev rate, so we need to move to the right. Open frame in the first. Jake moves over to the right lane. Well, Jake Peters playing farther right than any player today, or tonight, I should say, and his ball choice to start is called a mindset.
You like that name? The mindset. I do. Okay. I do. It's one I one I approve of that nobody cares about. Uh, the tiger again in the background. Did we sent Kimberly out to research Tiger Gate over here. She did she did some recon? <laughs> she did. <laughs> we, we sent her out with a security officer to make sure everything was safe. Uh, Kimberly Kimberly, what, what did we find out about this this tiger lurking in the background? Yeah, I did some recon and I got the scoop for you guys. So his name is actually Benny, and he's the mascot for the Benedictine High School in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh. And Justin, his owner, says that he's an alumni of the school and travels to mainly high school events. But Justin loves bowling, so he brought Benny here to watch this weekend. And now we know the story. Good job, Kimberly. Good Thank you. Clean up there. Sorry. Right. So Benny's got Benny's got a good little seat to this, by the way. I, I just hope that Benny's fully vaccinated. <laughs> might might say the same for Justin as well. Twenty one pin lead. Trying to extend. Eight, 10. It's like, can we have a game where there's not a split or an open frame? We got a lot of bowling still to go, my friend. Over two hours left here on FS1. Yeah, I mean, uh, it just, and again, I, I keep going back to what Norm talked about at the start of the show, where how the players broke this oil pattern down in practice. Then I started thinking about it, Norm. I go, yeah, you know, well, logically, you'd stay right as long as you could. In practice. And, and you made you made a great comment. Well, well, for me, I used to stay as far right as I could right before the start, and then I'd move in and find my strike line. Exactly. And it almost seems like they did this on purpose. Maybe, and, and we've seen that strategy before. You know, we've got to take the ball out of out of this guy's hand, so therefore I'm going to start deeper because I know this player's weakness could be A, B, or C. Correct. But I don't see anybody on this telecast that is going to benefit hugely. Now, if there is, it's Chris Vaughn. All right, so then what's the issue? Did they not play him wrong in practice? No. Or did they play him too deep in practice? No, they just played him to where they'd be tougher. Now, is that wrong? Is it right? Who knows? Okay. Somebody's got to advance. Well, all I know is the deeper that you get on the lane, it... Power, power becomes supreme. Yes. It's a definite benefit to have a lot of power. The more angle, the deeper you get on the lane, the more power you need to get that 10 pin out, that corner pin out. And that's why Chris Vi has been climbing this ladder slowly but surely. Beautiful. Second strike for Peters. Both of them have come on this right lane. Still to come tonight, Jason Belmonte in action here. And you know what's sitting in the office just about 100 yards away from us? His seventh Chris Schenkel PBA Player of the Year award. Ties with the legendary WRWJ. Take a look at your PBA Rookie of the Year. There's Jake Peters, who's in action right now as your nine seed, winning yet another sportsmanship award. Brian Schaefer being honored as well for his great charitable work. And Santu. The Sandman. I think he liked that shot. And as good as the one on the right lane reacted, that one reacted that bad. You think it's too straight of an angle? Well, I mean, I give Chris Vi the, the advantages as I would give Belmonte the advantage on what we've got left over here. But... It looked like on the right lane that Jake just peered it and it reacted perfectly. Well, he peered it on the left lane and it didn't. Five for five on these 6-10 conversions and he whiffed it. Air mailed it. Open frame again, his second. And both have come on this left lane. Well, I didn't see that coming, Randy. I just, you know, we got the straightest guy on the, in the field tonight. That's a bad miss. Yeah. Bad miss. They always say hit the one closest to you. 
Well, if he missed that one, hit the next one in line. Hit the one closest to you. I like that. I had never heard that. No way. Makes so much sense. Two in a row for Vi. Four overall. The lead swells to 30. I tell you what, all three of the shots on the right lane, just right on top of his of his mo intended mark. The thing is, one of them at the 218 because he didn't get it soft enough to give it time to move up that hill. Tell you what, that's worth the turkey right there. And he just goes up by 40 so quick. It's like, didn't we just start this game? Well, I mean, look at these numbers right here. I mean, that's a good four boards right down lane, and he peeled it all the way back from that spot that is supposed to be kind of out of bounds. Well, he dropped that speed a little bit, gave it time, and I tell you what, that ball made a lot of room up in a short period of time. Got some tape the here, tape. yeah. Tape. You might see this a lot when a guy misses the 610. Misses all of them. It's something wrong, and, you know, tape, usually the first thing. Is that just a feel thing that he needs, or he just wants things to be a schmidge tighter? It could be that there's too much tape, and he's taking one out. He might have tried to take one out. Now he's got to put one back. I don't know. It's just that the feel's wrong. Exactly. play farther right and straighter because he's got a lot more tilt than the other players on tonight's telecast and what I mean by that is he's got a little more spin to that rotation which helps clear the front part of the lane and retain a little bit more energy down lane so so now he's able to stay a little bit straighter yes a little lower rev rate, rev rate as well but still it's that kind of spin roll that he has he's three for three on that right lane yeah the left lane open Nine spare, open. And that's where he is right now, the left lane. Yeah, if he could get lined up on the left lane right now, then he could possibly give Chris Vi a run for his money. If he doesn't strike here, ooh, don't like his chances. Go. Hey, critical strike in the seven. Yeah, I think it was a must strike. And Norm, uh, I think Norm aced that with his comment. I mean, I don't, I don't think he has a chance if he doesn't strike on that ball. Yeah, and now that he did strike, <laughs> now it gets Chris thinking about it, you know? Last couple of shots, Chris Vi has been real light, real light, so he's thinking. It's not over yet. Been an up and down 2023 for Vi. A lot of incorrect guesses this week. Just able to see things a little bit better here in a facility that he's not really had great success in until tonight and this week. So that is four straight for Vi, the lead back up to 40. Well, Rob, he told us that his ball motion was something he was familiar with this week. And he was able to read his motion, and that's pretty much what got him to this point in the tournament. Oh, that's filthy right there. Goodness. And with this unprecedented 17-man stepladder format. You know, here he is as the 11th seed. He's like, hey, man, it's nice just to have an opportunity to be bowling still and not packing up and right. heading off to that next stop. Uh -oh. Did he get it? Oh. It's the same shot you just threw there. There you go. Come on. Shake it off. Shake it off. Well, he's kind of lucky only leaving the one-two. So if he makes this, he still makes Jake Peters get strikes instead of spares. Is that a miss or too much angle through the front? I think too much angle through the front end, maybe a pinch miss. But you saw when it bounced, it bounced a little bit more violently than the others have when he's, when he's lopping it. 
Good spare. So you're saying there's still a chance. Right now, Jake Peters can knock that deficit down to 18 with a strike here in the eighth and ninth. You can see the max scores right there in front of you. I'll circle it for you. 225 for Jakey, 243 for Chris. Jake perfect on this right lane so far. Well, that's left all day. There it is, there's your number. And with that, and only two frames left, all but over. But we are far from over here at the TOC tonight on FS1. Hey, I heard there's a rumor, some heavy hitters coming up later. Oh my goodness, still four more matches to come after this one. Marshall Kent is up next. Andrew Anderson, this guy Jason Belmonte, I don't know if you've heard of him. Um, he's from overseas. Uh, rumor is he's pretty good. And, and then there's this guy with the uh, with the distinctive hairstyle, Kyle Troop. We saw Kyle the other day in the facility with the uh, the Miami Vice villain hair bun look. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was cool. It looked good. It threw yeah. us off. It like I kept staring at him, saying, "I know you. But I don't know who you are." <laughs> So Kent, Anderson, Belmo, Troop, still to roll tonight here on FS1. So you didn't approve? Oh, Rob? I, Rob? Uh, I wanted to make sure his his iconic look was back. I didn't mind it. I bought it. It was good, but... You didn't think there was any way he was going to step onto no, this stage no. without without the real deal hair going, Correct. right? Correct. The, okay. the pick in back pocket, right? the hair yeah, absolutely. interjected. <laughs> Kimberly was giving, did you hear the, the conversation the other day? Kimberly giving Kyle some um, some hair tips? Something about a fusion thing or something that goes on the end of a hair dryer? Hair dryer, yeah. It was a, um, I had to write it down. Diffuser? A diffuser. Yeah, that, it is. that's it, yeah. yeah Kimberly talking <laughs> to Kyle Troop about investing in a diffuser for his hair. But and what, was it listen, wasn't his, his answer priceless, though? <laughs> what is that? I've never heard of that. <laughs> but now... I'm borderline obsessed to get him a diffuser because I want to see what it does to his hair. I'll chip in. Right? Oh, nice strike there. Yeah, Vi in control. Yes, sir. That is done. Chris Vi has just won his third straight. So the 11 seed took care of Wes Malott, took care of Stu Williams, and now he has eliminated Jake Peters. Yeah, there's this like two and a half step approach on the right lane there, much different from the, the one that he takes on the left lane. Well, he certainly is strong enough to get it done. Look at those cannons. Guy's got some serious pipes going. Two, four, eight, ten. Does it matter? Let's re-oil this stuff. You ever seen their his podcast? No. Yeah. I have not. Bold DMC. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know the brothers, Darren Tang, Mono yeah, Tang. sure. Right, Tang brothers. Yeah, the three of them started a podcast. Have you been on it? TV, bowling supply, heck no. Well, maybe I was, but it was before <laughs> before they they named it Bowl DMC. So that was a quick yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Open frame there for Vi. No problems. Yeah, no damage. 211, he moves on. Appreciate it. So, Vi with three straight wins. If he could just rattle off four more straight wins tonight, he'll get to our championship round tomorrow live on Fox. We're not asking too much, are we? No. Jake Peters to close up here in the 10th. You're not asking for much. I'm asking to be on their bold DMC podcast. And my guarantee is you will be on it within the next 10 to 14 days after that shout out. So Vi will move on. And he's got a loaded lineup that he has just joined. Marshall Kent, Andrew Anderson, Jason Belmonte, Kyle Troop. By the way, have not seen a whole lot of Jason Belmonte this season. Nope. No. A lot of people out there talking about it. Yeah. We're going to talk about it next. You know, folks saying, uh, is, is, is the king... Is the King's reign over? Don't, don't count out, Bill Monty. <laughs> Is now, the King's reign over? Oh, my God. Be careful. Be careful. All right, what? 
Kimberly with Chris. Chris, I just heard you say you are not done yet, and that is, uh, that's a big statement because you got some heavy hitters coming down the pipeline. Are you ready for the next show? Yeah, you know, I got to be out. You know, I'm feeling good. Uh, I caught, caught a few fortunate breaks there, so hopefully I can capitalize on those, make some better shots, and uh, see if we can keep this thing going. And you made some pretty epic spare conversions. Um, you got a few more left of you in those? I hope so, because <laughs> I'm going to need them. Good luck to you. Thank you. So Chris Vai, 211, 180, 31 pin win. The satisfying moment of the match, sponsored by Snickers. Nothing satisfies like a Snickers. And if you're getting hangry right now, I advise you, go find a Snickers. Put it down, put it in the gullet, because we still have two more hours of live bowling coming your way here on FS1. The TOC continues to roll on from Riviera Lanes. Here are the five talents you will see over the course of the next two hours here on FS1. So a big conclusion from Chris Vi took care of Wes Malott, then Stu Williams, and finally Jake Peters. Three straight wins for your 11 seed, and the Ohio native rolls on. But there are some big time names waiting for him over the course of the next two hours, and it starts with Marshall Kent as our coverage of the PBA Tournament of Champions rolls on next here on FS1.